Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back with Tony Manter today. He is a musician, artist, manager, producer, director, you name it. He does a lot uh, from Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to welcome Tony back to the show. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing good. Yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Pleasure to have you back. TonyMantor.com is the website. That's T-O-N-Y-M-A-N-T-O-R.com. Again, for new listeners and viewers today, please introduce yourself. Well, I'm I'm, uh, here in Nashville. I do production work, uh, develop, produce, get people ready for labels, get them out there to radio. I do some management to try and help them get shows, just to just try and take and build careers. Yeah. And with your extensive background of being, you know, um, an artist yourself and clearly all that you do, uh, what would you like us to uh, know about you uh, for today? Again, since some new people out there, there's a lot, a lot to it. I know we got into deep last time about all the work you do and what you're doing. So why don't you catch us up to speed? Well, uh, for all the new people that's listening, I mean, it's, I've, um, I've had a good, uh, good run here. I've worked with, with a lot of well-known people. I'm working with uh, Donnie Most of Happy Days, Debbie Campbell, which is Glenn Campbell's daughter. Um, worked with uh, Jackie Wilson's son, Bobby. I've, I've produced and managed Myla Mason for, for some time. Uh, I've, I've had a pretty good, pretty good career. I can't complain. I'm still here in Nashville and just keep, keep uh, working, developing, and trying to help people get to where they, where they want to be with their goals. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, uh, you told us, um, you know, what you started working on a special project. Could you give us the background to that and talk about how that is going? Well, absolutely. Uh, I um, I've been uh, I've been working for the last oh, probably since last mid midsummer of last year. I've been working on a project that that uh, supports autism awareness and, and acceptance and understanding around the around the around the world. Um, I've done a video for it. Uh, it's got over, I don't know, 210, 215,000 views. Uh, been doing a lot of, a lot of interviews on podcasts and, and radio and TV, you know, around the world. And, and, uh, last Friday I, I started a documentary on it. So it, uh, um, it's going well. I mean, it's, I couldn't ask for anything better. Great. Congratulations. And by the way, tell us uh, about how we can actually, um, you know, one of your, uh, current songs and videos. How do we reach you besides Tony Mantor, social media wise, YouTube wise? How can we find you? Well, I mean, of course, um, TonyMantor.com. Then they can go to my PlateauMusic.com, which is my label that follows all the artists I'm working with. Um, they can find me on all the social media networks and platforms, um, YouTube. I mean, just I'm all over the place. They can Google my name. They can they can find me. I'm out, I'm out there. And, um, you know, if people want to want to contact me, send me messages or whatever, I I definitely am open to that because that's one one of the uh, things that I've really enjoyed with uh, with doing this this uh, this video and, and documentary on on autism is that I've had I've had uh, cousins, brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, you know, tell me their stories yeah. about uh, how they how they have. Uh, autism in their family and and how they cope with it and how they work with it and what they have to do and um, you know they've opened my eyes a lot and and they've they've educated me yeah. on a lot of things and and it's uh, it's been a it's been a really joy to to get to meet and talk with some of the people that uh, that uh, you know want to be part of it perfect and by the way let's tell everyone the name of the song that became so popular is well it's why not me it's uh, it's um uh, it's based on on never giving up on your dreams. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter when it happens, only matters that it does happen. Oh. Um, you know, just just uh, positivity. I mean, there's so much negativity in this world that that people want to take shots at people and and do different things. And and you know, I just don't I don't buy into that philosophy. I want to take and be positive, uh, build people up rather than tear them down, and and just uh, help out any way I can. You know, so this. Uh, this song just kind of kind of grew legs on itself, and uh, I wound up working with with uh, you know with with people in the autistic world, and and it's just kept gr- growing and growing. And kind of like um, when we release records to radio, we we put it out there, and we hope that with the promotion people that we hire to get to 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 help the gatekeepers open the gates and and get get the song played, 
we hope that eventually it grows legs on its own. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happened here. I mean, we've we've just kept putting different things out there, press releases, just just talking with people, uh, uh, you know, interviews and and it's kind of grown its own legs and it's and it's building all all by itself. Got it. Well, let's talk more in particular now about this documentary, uh, the the overall goal. When do we hope hopefully plan on seeing it? And tell us again how you were contacted about it, if you don't mind, uh, with all the work you did with the song. Well, um, I was I was interviewed uh, for a documentary that's going to be done about Nashville and how it's changed over the last 25, 30 years. So I helped I helped out a lot on the on some of the music for the for the documentary and and did some demos for them to help them out. And then they just kind of brought up. It's like, have you ever thought about doing a documentary for autism? And I told them that I had, but I had to get some other things in place first so that I could take take it step by step. So, I mean, he just helped me out and got me in contact with some people and 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 one thing led to another. And I've got the script already written. It's all all done by by a Hollywood script writer. And and, uh, you know, so we've got we've got it all in place. And now it's just going to take a matter of time of filming. And and and, you know, I mean, it, you film it and then you get into the editing part. And I mean, it could take several months, you know, but but the, the cool part about it is that I'm finding mm-hmm. and I don't know what's going to happen yet. But yeah. I mean, just last week, I mean, I talked with uh, with a, a charity here in Nashville called Our Place Nashville, and and they help special needs and autistic people with housing and mm. and apartments and and getting their life started. You know, give them a chance yeah. to be out on their own, so to speak. And I spent I spent a couple hours with them just just filming and and going back and forth with questions and all that. And when I finished up. I mean, I, I sat back and I realized that a lot of your documentaries are hour, hour and a half. There was just no way possible I'm going to be able to get into everything that needs to be said and, yeah. and addressed about autism in an hour and a half. True. So, so I don't know what's going to happen. This is just in the back of my mind, but but I'm also going to start talking to him possibly about, uh, you know, a docu-series and, and really build it up so that we can hopefully do some really, really good things and big things for him. Amazing. This is amazing work you're doing, Tony. And thank you for joining us here again. Uh, you've been doing quite the podcast round, uh, checking out your social media. You've been busy. Tell us. I have. I mean, I I did a I did a podcast uh, Sunday, and it was it was really good. It was an hour long one, and we just talked about music. You know, we didn't really talk about anything really in depth, other than just how music has changed and different things. And it was really, really quite quite uh, quite good to do. And then uh, uh, I had uh, I had one yesterday with with uh, with with uh, some people with a uh, actually a, a a presenter in in southern France, and he's he's. Uh, got several different platforms of shows and he does a radio show up, I think like over a hundred radio stations around the world. So, so we had a, a good conversation. I talked with this morning with, with a lady that's over in, over in uh, the UK that um, uh, she's autistic and she's got two sons that are autistic. And, and we talked about different things on how we could, how we could present things and, and, and put, put things out there. I've got one tomorrow and then, then uh, mm-hmm. one Friday. So, I mean, it's, and then plus I'm doing my TV and interview things that I, that I've been doing. So it's, yeah, it's, it's been really, really quite, quite good. All right. Well, we're excited to have you here. And for today's show, what else did you want to share with everyone about the work you're doing? Uh, and of course, you're also representing artists. I don't know what avenue you want to go down to today. <laughs> well, what's kind of cool is is we re- uh, I released Debbie Campbell, which is Glenn Campbell's daughter, uh, mm-hmm. a song called Sunflower that Glenn did back back several years ago. And it was written by Neil Diamond. And and so we we covered that song because it was a really, really good song. And um, we released it over in the UK, and this is just another one of those things that that uh, that that what I was just saying, you know, earlier about growing legs all by itself. It uh, it what we wasn't really promoting it heavy to to any charts or anything because we wanted media to pick it up and and just build it and get a get a, a, a bigger presence over there so that we can get get performances. And uh, all of a sudden, it just started growing legs. It's number twenty seven in the country right now in the chart. So. So I mean I'm I'm really happy on that because because we're uh, we're growing on that and and building and and uh, just gives a lot of possibilities that can happen for her over there. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. That's exciting. How did you originally meet up with Debbie? Would you mind sharing a little bit of your background and history with her? And Sure. Um, well, Debbie um, um, was a friend of, of uh, Bobby Wilson and that's Jackie Wilson's son. And I mean, for anybody that doesn't know Jackie Wilson, they need to look him up because he was, uh, you know, an iconic soul singer uh, back in the 60s and 70s. And and uh, he was one of the one of the people that Michael Jackson uh, wanted to emulate and and Bruno Mars, you know, along, uh, you know, copied a lot of, you know, influenced, uh, you know, got a lot of influences from him. So Bobby and 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 uh, Bruno was together, mm-hmm. you know, during Bruno's formative years, you know, in his teens. And and then uh, Bobby and I wound up working together. And I produced and managed him for eight years. And he was uh, he knew Debbie and 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 they were kind of in that same circuit, different doing different things. And he told her, he says, man, you need to call Tony he goes, because, you know, you need to take and do some stuff for your dad and all that. Yeah. So we started actually producing her album, which was a tribute to her father, right before he died. We didn't get it quite finished before, but but uh, we got it. We got it. We got it done, and then we released it the next year on his birthday. You know, wow. so, so uh, from there we've I've released uh, a few songs over in the UK, and this is her uh, I think third song over there. And now it's starting to really pick up some steam, and as starting uh, starting Sunday, which was the 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 uh, new week over there for them, we was 27 in the charts. Congratulations. Awesome. 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 Who else are you working with? You're still available for hire if someone out there is interested. How does it work these days, right? Because everything is like, you know, how do you pitch yourself <laughs> in the business? Well, you know, um, the 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 whole formula for, for records and, and everything is the same. You got to get in and record quality projects and and get it in front of the right people. But but the key is is really doing your homework and 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 figuring out what who you want to work with and and what they've done you know because a lot of people can say oh I can do this for you I can do that for you mm-hmm. but but in the in the music business you've got to and and not just the music business the entertainment business I mean I mean you know you've you've dealt in that in that side of it where you've got you hear a lot of stories you hear a lot of people say oh this is great this we're going to do this and then you know 5 6 months later or 2 months later or whatever the time frame may be nothing happens it's all just smoke you know so so the key is you know you know, check the person out. Mm-hmm. I tell everybody, check everybody out, including me. Make sure that if I tell you something, make sure you can verify it, that I've actually done that, you know, that I can do that, you know, because after a certain period of time, you know, when a person's been doing it, they they collectively have a body of work, you mm-hmm. know, and, and if you look at that body of work, where it's been, what it's done, what it sounds like, uh, what it looks like, then that can determine whether that's a good fit for you. I mean, it's like if you're doing going into the movies and that type of thing, you've got to look at a producer's body of work. What kind of films has he done? You know, and 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 is it something that that I would want to be associated with? Well, the same thing in the music business. You know, what kind of records have they mm-hmm. produced? What kind of chart history do they have? Have they had successes? You know, what have they done? You know, so it's it's just a matter of of due diligence, uh, doing your homework, and then ultimately at the very end, make sure that whatever you do is at the highest quality because because that's what counts. That's what will separate you from anybody out there. If you can put a record out that when you hear it on radio, you hear your star that you like, and then you hear your song, and then you hear a star that you like, the quality didn't dip at all. It stayed all at an equal equal level. The only difference was the style of music and the style of the song. Awesome. Yeah, interesting. All right, thank you so much. And by the way, uh, currently you're living in Nashville, Tennessee, but you're originally from up north, right? Yeah, I'm originally from Maine. Mm-hmm. Um, I um, I traveled back and forth before I got before I actually wound up in Nashville. I I was you know doing some work in Boston and New York and 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 I'm in hustle and bustle of the city. And then uh, and then I wound up uh, making a, making a um, trip down at Nashville with some friends and and got to know the area, got to know a few people and and started developing a few relationships there. And then uh, I liked it so much. I traveled back and forth to Nashville, the extra mileage just to go there because because the quality was just as good, if not better than what I was doing in Boston and New York. Plus the the laid back attitude, you know, it was just just uh, just a very, very good atmosphere to be in. And uh, 
I, I wound up, uh, you know, falling in line with some people that that had done some really good things, had big hit records and and uh, could open doors for me and, and kind of give me guidance if I needed it. And, uh, you know, so then I wound up making the move in 93. And this year here is my 30th anniversary of being here in Nashville. Wow. Congratulations. Amazing. Uh, and what do you have behind you? We talked about share behind you last week. What's that gold uh, record doing? What is that? That's uh, actually one of Cher's gold records that I was that I was get, had given to me, you know, because I'm a big fan of Cher and 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 uh, I, I got a chance to meet her and in, in, in a in a project that I was working on. And uh, that's that's the great thing about about music and, and entertainment business is you think that you think that you look at other people and you go, oh, wow, you know, I kind of kind of, you know, like what they're doing and and they wouldn't be interested in what I'm doing and everything. And, and then, yeah, I've had I've had opportunities where I've been in in rooms with four star generals, you mm -hmm. know, and, and they tell their stories, that which is really cool. And then they'll turn around, they'll ask me for my stories. And I'm going, well, it doesn't compare to what you've got. And they're just as interested in my stories as I am in, in theirs. And and then, uh, you know, I've, I've had opportunity to work in, you know, work with different people or be associated with people in the NBA, the NFL, you know, and and and, uh, you know, I produced uh, uh, Cedric Smith uh, on a, on a few songs, which he was a former uh, running back for the Washington Redskins back then and and Minnesota Vikings and uh, great singer, great songwriter. And he's still in the, the NFL doing things and, and coaching and all that. So so you just never know who's going to be around that next corner that's going to be someone that you might be involved with you know professionally or 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 what you know just just meeting somebody and and having some things in common and and friendship and it's it's just uh, you just never know it's just just tremendous got it and anything current happening in the music business that we should be aware of that's of interest to our listeners and viewers um you know at your you know you've been in the business for quite some time so you've seen lots of changes uh and we talked a little bit about like the whole streaming business last time right? Right, right uh how that affects things it's not it's unfortunate for the writer you were saying right yeah i mean i mean it 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 used to be that back in the 70s the 80s the 90s you know you could you could take and write a song you could you could hopefully get it recorded mm -hmm. and hopefully if you got even if you just got an album cut i mean you was just really happy hey, man i got an album cut yeah an album cut on a on a fairly well known you know singer and it doesn't have to be the the level of of a garth or or you know you know, Barbara Streisand or anything like that. It just had to be a someone that's out there performing, you know, maybe may have some hit records out there. Uh, and you could make yourself, you know, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars, depending upon what they were, what they were selling and all that. Today's world, that's completely changed because because unless an artist is out there actually performing and yeah. selling merchandise, mm -hmm. you don't get you don't get those royalties anymore because because people aren't buying the albums, you know, or the CDs, they're, they're downloading the, oh, I like, then they're cherry picking, you know, it's like, they'll go in, they'll listen to the album. They'll say, oh, I like this. I like one, three and five and that one. And that way they'll download it. And if they download it, that'd be nice if they're downloading it because they're buying it. But lots of times they're on Spotify or whatever, and they, they're paying their nine ninety nine or whatever, whatever Spotify charges per month now for the different levels. And they're basically renting the song because they can download it and and put it on their playlist but they're not actually buying it so they're streaming and they're listening to it and the writer only gets fractions of pennies for every time it's streamed rather than 10 cents a, a, a cut so you take you take that fractions of a penny and then you multiply it by how many times it would have to get streamed in order to make what you would make if you were selling it it's it's just outrageous Amazing. And the business that you've seen, what else is next for you? Um, you know, with this documentary, clearly, is that taking up most of your time and day and efforts? It's an exciting feat. Um, and what else is going on for you? Well, it's, um, um, of course I'm, I've got Debbie over in, in the UK. Uh, I'm getting ready here in a couple of weeks to release Donnie most a uh, single here in the U S uh, so that'll keep me busy. And, and uh, you know, I continue to work on on uh, you know different different ways to to uh, you know promote and, and get the word out about the documentary about about the video that I'm doing. Um, 
and and hopefully you know that our next time here in two weeks i'll have another announcement on on the next episode of my video which could be kind of cool Ooh, interesting is that a little tease to something that's up and coming <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, i mean it, it's um um i'm i'm in the process right now of getting getting some b-roll and, and still shots from from some people and and once i get all that together then i can i can announce that and 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 start building towards the uh, next uh, episode for why not me which will be released in april which is autism awareness month Oh my goodness. That's right. It is coming up. Yeah. And you know, it's something that you've been very vocal about clearly helping so many. And um, I feel like there's so many of us that have been touched by those that have been labeled autism. I hate using the label of it, but um, I know so many beautiful people with this, um, you know, and it's just, uh, it's amazing how the course society, how we're seeing an increase in the diagnosis of autism. And um, I just, I just hope that stereotype type of people that are different and you know by you creating that video and this documentary uh to, to learn to embrace and being different is beautiful it gives us each and every one of us what's unique and each and every one of us of us is a unique person and a soul and i just hope this does when we say raising awareness what does that really mean right um yeah. i think it's more of it's us understanding loving embracing and right, right. not being scared of someone who's different and you know and i try to teach my kids they're six and eight about embracing others that are different and you know even if it's the, the class bully you know what don't treat them like that back you be nice and kill them with kindness you know it's just right. and, and the younger we learn nowadays and you know I'm, I'm glad because the school celebrates autism week and um i know last year they made this beautiful mural outside uh for the school i'm just so happy that so we've come so far but again there's still more work to be done could you share some of the you know what you're encountering with those around you and being with so many people um to make this documentary and how yeah. they feel about the cause well you know um the interesting part is the um, autism awareness month is basically autism awareness and acceptance mm -hmm. and and I actually trademarked a slogan that I'm going to use on my documentary and, and different podcasts that I that I may do. And that's autism awareness, acceptance and understanding, you know, because because um, the the biggest challenge, I think, that we have is communication. Mm -hmm. Because, because uh, I had an interesting conversation just this morning with a lady and she's uh, she's autistic and her son is autistic and she's got an eye undiagnosed other son that uh. they believe is 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 autism mm -hmm. you know and and um the the interesting part that masks the her other son that's undiagnosed is that he's he's uh super intelligent you know so so because intelligent people sometimes can have their different little quirks and everything it kind of she says it kind of masks the mm -hmm. fact that she thinks that he's autistic but but the interesting thing that i came out of out of her conversation was was um the ability for people that you would not recognize that are autistic to tell you that they are autistic mm -hmm. because, because as soon as they open up ah. you know sometimes you know the, the the first common thing that is said to them is you don't look autistic mm -hmm. and and autistic people they look just like you and me you know yeah. you know they are there's no difference there as far as looks and 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 that when somebody says that you don't look autistic to them or or they start start talking to them about different questions that they don't know what to ask then that makes the person that told them that they were autistic wish they hadn't have said that mm -hmm. you know and that's the biggest barrier i think that we've got to really really address is the fact that we should be able to allow autistic people to if we don't know they are and they want to let us know they are when they tell us that they are we don't we we can't act shocked we can't say oh you don't look autistic we can't make stupid statements yeah. and we don't know that they're stupid you know but but that's where understanding and learning will help because because at that point we kind of we're not tick 
you know, we're not tiptoeing around these people, you know, not knowing what to say. If we do our due diligence and we 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 understand a little bit because we 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 do the the um, looking and finding out of it, then hopefully we can have a little bit more intelligent conversation with them and not make them wish that they had to let us know that they're autistic. Yeah. And of course, there are those that that you can tell, you know, that they're a little bit different because because autism is there's so many different you know spectrums of mm -hmm. of how it is. But we have to take and learn, and I think that's our biggest challenge is is learning, and and then the once we learning, then the acceptance and the and and the the awareness is there yeah. because we're already aware. Then we accept it because we because we're learning and understanding. Absolutely. Um, well, we appreciate all you're doing to help increase the awareness. And this project is amazing um, and cannot wait. Do we have an expected completion date for it? Just curious. Or is that? You know, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, sometime this summer, you know, I'll get to the point of where I can start editing because because I've got um, uh, I've got the charity that I interviewed and I've got a doctor I want to interview. Um, and then I've got an autistic uh, uh, uh person that that uh, has has shown that they're interested in in doing this and then i want to talk with their parents you know because because the the way that that people that are autistic handle it it's completely different the way that the parents or siblings or, mm -hmm. or you know relatives would handle it you know so so it's not just the family that we have to, you know, the person within the family that that's autistic that we have to take and understand. But I think it's getting to the the, the approach of where we have to have the family understanding, because one one person told me that that the understanding part they love that that I was bringing that up because because they have a twelve year old that's that's autistic and now they're having to teach their eight year old why their 12 year old brother is different than them yeah. so that they can understand what the autism is that makes that that makes his brother just a little bit slightly different than what he is so it just it's a whole family thing so yeah. there's just so many layers of what we have to take and do to 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 acknowledge and understand and kind of you know make things a little bit smoother for everybody Yes. Well, Tony Mentor, pleasure having you here again live on the show. Uh, would you mind uh, sharing all forms of contact, how we can reach you? Sure. They can reach me at plateaumusic.com. Uh, that's my label that, that will keep them up to date with all the artists and, and releases that we're doing. They can really they can keep up to date on what I'm doing with my with my with my singers and productions and autism and, and any other projects I've got going on at TonyMantor.com. Then, of course, I'm on all social media platforms at Tony Mantor and then go to YouTube, Tony Mantor and and, so I'm, and then Google, you know, will lead them to all about all those things. So I'm pretty available. Great. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. Uh, really, again, pleasure having you here. Have a fantastic day, uh, an even better uh, week. It's the middle of the week. We'll get through it together and uh, looking forward to we meet again. I guess it's two weeks from now, right? Absolutely. That's all right. right. Thank you, Tony. Have a great day. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.